podcast number three. This one's got fireworks. Hey, this is Zach. I'm on my way to meet with Dan Carmody, and uh, we're going to talk about the story for Eloquent Graffiti. He would go after somebody like this, but if there's a reason he's supposed to be somewhere else, and this, he like what you said, he welcomes this Diver- yeah. d- diversion. Yeah. That that might that little extra, you know, that that does might make it a little bit more believable. Yeah. And then so he welcomes it, and then he falls into something more, and he might get there might be one moment in in a scene where it's just like this brief connection. It's just enough for him to to go that extra bit. Right. The question is, what, what does it he want to do? Right. Or what is it that he's that he's willing to avoid? That he wants to avoid. That he wants an excuse to avoid. Yeah. The interesting thing about that scene would be uh, giving Dusty the objective of you want to help her, and then secretly telling Mary Elise you don't want his help. You can do this on your own. You know, and then you know, halfway through the scene, stepping in, telling Dusty, he's like, you you need to convince her and show her that you know what you're talking about and that you can help. You know, and you know him being able to give her a solution to the airport. I don't know. I mean, maybe like what he maps out is too complicated for her, or, or even to the point where they're on the, they're on the same the same line. They go be heading the same direction to up to a certain point, and that thing that he's avo- avoiding it gives to a point where that that's almost helping his decision. Yeah. Yeah. To stay on with her. Yeah. Or, the, or there's even like where they have the hop, where they they get out and he's gonna catch the next line that goes to where he's going and she needs to hop in a different direction. But then they they're talking at that place and like even he's going in his mind like I can either go do what I'm avoiding, or, but something else happens like he might fall for her slightly. Something plus that decision just pushes him over the edge to do the extra the extra mile of that. Yeah. What if he's already generally going to, like, say it's a a uh, ten mile journey through the subway, and what if he's actually going already going nine miles of that, you know, toward the airport, and so it's over the course of the journey there that. Um, when you get to mile nine, he makes the decision to continue to the airport instead of, like that's the point where he's got the choice to make. After he's, you know, now invested into the, maybe. It was better up here before it came out here. <laughs> no, it was, yeah, no, it was, it was like, what's the, the nine yards, that final yard, right. everything. The story has a lot of depth to it because there is going to be reveals. There's a, there is going to be these. They're not entirely telling the truth to each other. Mm-hmm. And it could be interesting, like you're saying, tying that theme of loss to even the underlying themes to why they're really there or yeah. why somebody's avoiding something. And then it ultimately happens too. So it's, it, I like it a lot because it's just it's, it's it's playing with that theme, but it's almost like different shades of that theme. Yeah. Which is interesting. Yeah, I like. I mean, I almost. I don't know if it's. I don't know if it's partially laziness, but I almost can't help to do that. Like even hard of now. Um, if like if I were to give you the information that every character in this movie is dealing with the same thing, all of a sudden you would see it. You would see everybody in this movie is dealing with either having been abandoned or being an abandoner. And um, so I, so I just I, I can't help like I just latch on to like that one thing and then I just put it in everything, no, in different incarnations. Because for me it feels like then I've fully explored it. If I do like different like you were saying shades, different shades of it throughout the film. I've never been in this IHOP before. 
a lot of people doing what we're doing. Especially see those guys over there. They got the laptop open. And... Yeah, everybody's got, it's almost like a Starbucks. Yeah. Everybody's got laptops. My coffee. Okay, so that was a great first meeting with Dan. Uh, I just said goodbye to him. Uh, he's going to be uh, in San Francisco for the week for the Thanksgiving holiday. And uh, we will continue to pass uh, notes and writing back and forth via email. Um, but it was, uh, it was a fruitful first meeting. And I'm, uh, I'm thrilled to have Dan on the team. All right. Take it easy. <laughs>